Now, if we head on over to the Fast API documentation under security, there's going to be OAuth with password. Uh, and so most of the things I cover are going to be coming from this documentation right here. Uh, now, the first thing that we have to do is we have to install a library that handles signing and verifying JWT tokens. And so we're going to use this Python dash Josie library, and then we have to provide a uh, cryptography back backend. So we're just going to copy this line right here, and we're going to run this uh, in the command line. And what I'm going to do is when it comes to authentication and anything with JWG tokens, I'm going to create a new file and I'm going to call this oauth2.py. All right. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to import from Josie. We're going to import JWT error and JWT. Now there's going to be three things, uh, three pieces of information for our token. Well, actually, uh, well, there's three pieces of information, but there's three other things about the token that we need to provide. So we're going to say uh, we, we're going to need the secret key, right? That's that special key that I mentioned that ultimately handles uh, verifying the data integrity of our token, which resides on our server only. So we're going to have to provide that secret key. We're also going to need to provide the algorithm that we want to use. We're going to be using HS256, and then we're going to need to provide uh, one other thing, which is uh, the expiration time of the token. So we haven't really discussed the expiration time. If we just give a plain token uh, without an expiration date, that means that user's logged in forever. And there's no application that just lets a user log in forever, I don't think. Uh, so we're going to provide a expiration time so that we can dictate exactly how long a user should be logged in after they actually perform a login operation. And so we need an expiration time. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just save these as uh, variables. I'm going to say secret key equals, and then this is just going to be some arbitrary long text. I'm just going to paste that in here. And if you're just wondering why, uh, I mean, this, if you just follow the documentation, actually, right, you'll see that they do the same thing. So we just need to give it some really long text in this case. And it even gives you a command to kind of get a string like that for your password. Um, because you uh, you could theoretically just put, you know, hello or something here, and that's going to work just fine. However, it's not quite as secure, but for learning purposes, it doesn't matter. Just provide some kind of string, right? And then the algorithm is going to look like this, and then the expiration time is going to look like this. So I'm just going to copy this from the documentation. And then we're going to define our function. So this is going to be create access token. And what we're going to do is remember the access token is going to have a payload. So whatever data we want to encode into the token, we have to provide that. So I'm going to pass that in as a variable called data, and this is going to be of type dict. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to make a copy of this data because I don't want to actually change it. I want to make a copy of it because we're going to, we're going to manipulate a few things and I don't want to accidentally change the original data. So we're going to say data dot copy. So this is going to make a copy and I'm going to store it in a new variable. And it's going to be two underscore code. So this is all the data that we're going to uh, encode into our JWT token. And then now we're going to create the expiration field. So to actually do that, there's a couple of things. First of all, right now we have it set to 30 minutes. Uh, and so what we need to do is to provide the time uh, of 30 minutes from now, right? So we have to provide the time that it's going to expire in. So we have to grab the current time and then add 30 minutes. And so anytime you're working with dates and times, we have to import the date time library. So we'll say date time, import date time and time delta. And I'm going to say expire equals date time dot now. So this is going to grab the current time and I'm going to pass in time delta of and then since this is in minutes, I would say minutes equals access token expire minutes. And then what we want to do is we want to grab the to encode, which is a, a copy of a dictionary. So this is also a dictionary. And I want to update it. And here we're going to pass in expiration. And then we're going to provide the expire time. 
So we're just adding that extra property into the uh, into all of that data that we want to encode into our JWT. And so now our JWT will tell us when it's going to expire. And what we're going to do is we're going to call JWT um, coming from the, is it Jose? I guess it's the Jose library. So JWT.encode, so this method is actually going to create the JWT to token. And we'll say the first property is everything that we want to put into the payload. The second one is going to be the secret key with the signature. And then we have to specify the algorithm. So the algorithm equals algorithm, algorithm right there. And then at this point, we're just going to return, oh, we have to save this in a variable. And here we just do encoded JWT. And then now we can go back to our specific path operation. And since we're already importing, actually, we have to also import OAuth too. And then here we're going to create an access token. And we're going to call the, sorry, not utils, OAuth2 dot create access token. And we're going to say the data equals, and then we're going to pass in a dictionary. So here, the user ID field. Remember, this is the data that we want to put in the payload. So I have decided that I'm going to put in the user ID and pretty much nothing else. I don't really care about anything else. We could give it a role, we could give something else. But for me, I just want to encode the user ID. So that's what I'm passing in here. However, if you wanted to provide some extra information about the user, if you wanted to provide, uh, you know, their scope of different endpoints they can access, you can put all of that information in here. And so I'm going to say the user ID is going to be set to user.id. And so now what we can do is we're going to return a few things. I'm going to say we're going to return the access token, which equals access token. And then we're going to tell the user what kind of token this is. So this is token underscore type. And this is what's referred to as a bearer token. And I'll explain how to actually configure that on the front end. Um, but we, literally in the authorization header, we just write the word bearer and then we provide the token. So nothing special there. All right, let's try that out. And it looks like I got an error. And I don't know why I put an equal sign there. And let's try this out. So we got, we've got the login endpoint. Let's put in the correct email this time. And let's see what happens. Look at that. We got an access token. And this kind of looks like a JWT token, right? It just looks like a bunch of random text. And then it tells us it's a bearer token. So let's actually copy this. And what I want you guys to do is uh, go to your web browser and I want you to search for JWT. And then go to the first, well, go to JWT.io. And then here, what we can do is we can paste in our JWT token. And what's really cool is it's going to decode the token for us. And so you can see this is the algorithm we used. It is a JWT token. But take a look at the user ID, right? This is the actual user ID that we passed into the token. So all of the data that we encrypted into the token are all sitting right here. So we also got the expiration time. And then the signature is somewhere in here as well. Um, but isn't that pretty cool, right? It was able to decode that. And it's important to understand that, you know, none of this is encrypted. Anybody can see this information. But by being able to sign it, we know that no one can kind of mess with it. And we can also specify an expiration time. So we know that how long this token is valid. So when the, the our API gets it, it's going to just verify that nobody touched the token. It's going to verify that, hey, the expiration time, you know, isn't before the current time, which would mean that it's already expired. And at that point, it already knows the token's valid. And then we can assume that uh, everything is good to go.